This is Anthony Baskin, defensive back from Carson University. Today I'm just breaking down offensive game film of the St. Louis Rams. First, I'm going to be starting off with just the statistical part. One might just say that statistics is just a small part of the game, which is true, but it also gives you the insight of actually what is going on of an offensive coordinator thinking and his logic behind his calls. First, I'm going to go ahead and break down to you how I break down film, which would just be by a statistical chart sheet and of a chart sheet of the down and distance, as you can see here. Here I broke it down with five different groups. You might think that there's only three downs, but we also know that in today's game that there's so much thinking and so much logic behind each call. So with the first one, it is first and ten. With the St. Louis Rams, on first and ten, they have a total of 28 snaps. 18 of those snaps are run plays, and 10 of those are pass. The leading one of the runs is either lead zone or power, which I saw. From the passing, it's primarily been slants and outs. On top of that, they also run deep outs, but those have been very contested against the defensive backs, and they really haven't been completed that much. Second, I would like to go to second and seven or greater. With that being said, it would be second down and seven plus up and above for yardage. From that, they had a total of 18 plays. Six of those plays are run. Twelve of those plays are pass. So you see here, there's a highest percentage of 66.7% when it comes to pass. So your, so your mental thinking, just my mental thinking and my mind frame going into that play which be primarily passing for them. With that being said, they hit a lot of hitches, which is what they really favored for this down. They, they went and completed a total of five out of six. As far as the running, the lead one for that is zone lead. Now I'll go ahead and look into second down, six yards or less. Here, you can see that there's a total dominancy of run when it comes to second down of six yards or less, leading the way with eight runs, which is 90%, and only one pass. When you look at that, it's primarily power. So you have a great chance coming into it as a defensive back safety or corner my way. I know that most likely would be power. So my anticipation will be key for that. And that is the number one thing that sets defensive backs apart from any level is the anticipation, the knack that they have for the ball. Also, too, now, going into third downs. This is huge because everyone knows that, especially at this level, this is a three-down game. So now you have third down and seven with seven yards or greater. This is surprising here because it is majority pass, 100% pass of the seven plays that they have. And of those plays, they completed or ran, it's most likely been slants. They also tried hitches, which is the second most number of snaps that they had, but those are incomplete. Now you have 35, now you have 35 or 5 yards or less. You have 5 snaps from that and it's been a 100% pass again. And what they've targeted was slants. They were 1 for 3 with second highest number being seams. With that being said, now as me as a defensive back, when I sit back and look at this, I collect my thoughts and as I go into practice, I sit back and I watch how everything's developed. Looking at this sheet, I then now see that on third down, that it's a pass. So now I know my mind will automatically be with anticipation thinking, I'll be watching for the pass. Not only that, I know what routes that they run, so therefore, I will be quick, and with my, with my peripherals, I will therefore watch for those routes and anticipate them. That's the biggest thing, like I said before, a defensive back can have because it helps leads to the great ones you see, such as Ed Reed. As I sit back and spoke with a, a great friend of mine who was a Hall of Fame cornerback, Mike Haynes, he told me that that's one of the greatest assets you can have as a defensive back, along with also making a receiver look like he is open. Another reason why I say that these statistics are so great, because like I mentioned earlier, that when you go to practice, your day is limited, your reps are limited, just from speaking with some of my friends that are at that level. So with that being said, since I know things are limited, each rep counts. So since I therefore know that the, that the practice script is based off of down distance and those plays that offensive coordinators use, I'm therefore aware and I know what's coming to me to a sense that 
A game is simply a test. A test that I would truly be prepared for because I know what the offensive coordinator is thinking. Now, with that being said, there's also things that you must go out there and also react to. But it definitely helps knowing the logic and the mental thinking behind offensive coordinators. Next, I have a chart sheet, also known as a, a hit sheet, as far as breaking down the hashes that offensive coordinators use for those games. You know, there's two hashes. I also have three sheets because I use the middle of the field as well. On the right hash, you have a total of 25 snaps, 10 of those snaps being runs, which is 40%, and you also have 15 of those snaps being passed. On the right hash of the formations, they really love to run twins or twins open. Pro, was, pro formation was the second leader formation for them. From the twins, you see a lot of power and some zone for the running plays. Next, you see, is the middle of the field. On the middle, they have a total of eight snaps, five of them being run, three of them being passed. And of these plays, the highest formation will either be pro and tray left. From the pro, from the pro, it's either been hitch for the pass and zone for the run, and for the trips, it's only hitches for the pass. That shows up on the third down. On the left hash, you have a total of 34 snaps, 16 of them run, and 18 of them pass. On this hash, they really show a great number of a number of formations from the formations I wish we'll be going over here in a little bit. So from this prognosis, you can see that the St. Louis Rams is a very balanced team. They're not just a heavy pass, they're not a heavy run. Their identity is to keep you on your feet as a defense to try to keep you guessing. But from the statistics of the game, along with the anticipation, will bring you a great, a great sense of play on the field and also off. Here, I have here on the whiteboard, now is the whiteboard aspect of the game. I'm just drawing it up. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and give you about the formation and what they do from the formation and how it actually pans out in plays. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a formation of pro and how the Rams ran it and the defense that sometimes that the Tennessee Titans will give you. This first off starting with pro is 11 personnel, one back, one tight end. Sometimes they would give you at my for the defense for the Titans. At my school, we would call it a swim front, which is your end would be in a nine technique. Your tackle, therefore, being a five. Your backside tackle would be in a one technique, and your backside end would be in a five. Your corner, depending on the coverage, primarily, there were sometimes I would see them in man, or I would see them in some type of a cover three or a cover four. Corner. Here I'm going to go ahead and give them, I'll give you a look of the defensive back playing cover four along with the linebackers. Corner having inside technique. Your sound will therefore go to the adjustment of the strength, which is receivers. So you have two receivers over here. Your sound will play inside technique of the slot receiver. Then you have your strong safety goes over. Your free would be back over here, playing his respective fourth, and then your corner also playing inside leverage here. Your mic would go ahead somewhere be between a 10 and a 20, and your will will go ahead, therefore, be out in about, let's say, an 8. My heads up of that tight end. Black scheme for this, what they will run sometimes, they give you either zone or power. Here, I will go ahead and give you an example of 
just a typical zone blocking. Your front side tight end would just reach out here. He would then take whatever is coming in most pursuit, what we sometimes call most dangerous, and kicking out that end. Your tackle would then for a step out, take his first step outside to zone black to zone block his tackle. Same with your guard stepping out and getting who was ever in his respective zone, along with the center, backside guard, and along with that tackle. Your running back will then get the handoff from the quarterback and see his best option, see what best fits for him. Along with your receiver, sometimes you just run out that corner, run off that corner, or maybe sometimes that slot also too would just run off that Sam or whoever is lined up on him. Now we'll be going over the twins open, which is 20 personnel, two backs, no tight end. from because the fullback is to the strength. I'm going to just go ahead and draw up a simple basic 4-3 defensive front with the, the back guys, defensive backs, running the cover two. Mike will go ahead and be the 10, and your will will go ahead and be in typically sometimes head up or in the 30. From here, we're just going to go ahead and run a simple power play. Your front side, your front side tackle is going to block here, chip, and go to the next level to try and get the mic. Your tackle will go ahead and take that, your guard will go ahead and take that tackle and block him here to lead, to make this running lane. Your backside guard will then be pulling to first take the most dangerous, which is typically be the end to kick him out. Your fullback will then for a lead and take the most dangerous, which sometimes will need to be that safety or maybe that, that back. This is your power running play. Now we're going over twins open. 20 personnel, two backs, no tight end. As it came from, because the fullback is to the strong side. Now to drop the basic four three. Here, I'm going to go ahead and just draw your basic power run play. Your bike scheme would be for this for the tackle to block down here. I mean, your tackle to block down here on this tackle and then chip, reach the next level, and get the mic. Your guard would then resume and take the responsibility of that tackle. Your backside guard will be pulling to kick out this defensive end. And now your fullback will be leading, taking the most dangerous, which is either the Sam or that strong safety. Then leading open, 
then leaving open that running gap for your running back to sometimes either hit that C gap or still the B gap. Now we're going over twins type, 21 personnel, two backs, one tight end. Now I'm just going to go ahead and draw up your basic 4-3 coverage. Now you can go ahead and be in the under front because your Sam will be coming down taking that outside wide nine technique. Your end will then come inside for a 5 technique. Your tackle will go ahead and go to a 3 technique. Your backside, your backside tackle will take a shade of that center. Your end will go ahead and take a five. Back at the college, Carson Newman will go ahead and cloud his backside with the free side safety in the corner. Your corner will be an outside five yards of that tight end at about another six yards depth. Your free safety will then go ahead. His insert will be more inside the Sam because the Sam has outside leverage but he still needs to go ahead and resume his deep path responsibility if it is a cover two for the cloud. Your strong safety will go ahead and take his normal and resume his normal responsibilities of what we call a rifle back at Carson Newman, cover four. And your corners will then go ahead like I said, since his cover four on this side would still go ahead and play his normal cover four uh, alignment and technique for that wide receiver. Your mic would then go ahead and be in a heads up of the guard. And then now, at some schools, it may vary. Your will will go ahead, the plug, and will be anywhere from between a 30 or that go ahead he will play that B gap. Here, I'll go ahead and draw up a run play that the St. Louis Rams run. At the snap of the ball is a play action, but at the snap, the running back will glare here, flare out, it'll be a play action, and during that play action back here, the fullback, which we call a waggle, he'll sneak out here and run out to his flats. That tight end would then read the zone and find an opening in that zone. And Clemens, majority of the time, would either hit that tight end or that waggle fullback going across. He typically did that on the third down just for a quick hit to pick up that first down conversion. Another reason why film study is so important, because just throughout the course of games, offenses give each other hand signals to communicate to one another. Sometimes not wanting to give away calls, like such people know sometimes with Payne Man when he gives an Omaha call, they can pick up on some things. Here, Clement, to, when he communicates to his offensive line, the rest of the offense, he gives hand gestures toward his face or towards his neck, and that's that movement to let them know that they are not running the ball and to power to that way. A reason why this is so important is because defensive backs like myself or defense period, we now know what they're doing and where exactly they're doing it at, which, create, which will create a positive play for us as a defense. Another reason why film study is so important because you're able to pick up tendencies of offenses, sometimes even players. Harry Clemens, the quarterback in this game, on this last drive of the game, he stared down his receivers for the last two plays. For this one here, you see he stared down the receiver, and the safety in the corner was able to, to make a play on the ball, not necessarily touching it, but forcing the receiver to alter his route, which messed up the timing. But this one here is pretty much the same thing. Clement hypes the ball, and he's staring down the receiver, heaves up the ball, and was doing that, the safety was some, somewhat able to get over there, 
he wasn't able to make a, a big impact on the play. But let's say if the ball was tipped or had a deflection, that safety could have picked it off. And on top of that, the corner made a good play because he knew the ball was coming his way. And like I said, film study is very important. It's not necessarily everything when it comes to the game, but it helps inform you and lets you know what's going on in the field.